Well, good morning, church. We are Medina United Church of Christ Congregational, and no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Welcome to this final Sunday in June. It pains me to say that. Where did it go? I love summers in Ohio, but it's, it's like shrinky-dink summer, like it heats up and it gets smaller. I don't like it, like the 500 days of January that we get, and the three days of June. Something's up with this. Time is weird, but you are here, and it is now, no matter if you are here live, live stream, on the podcast, anywhere you are in space and time. You are welcome. You are right where you need to be. May that give you some modicum of peace in a turbulent time. So maybe we start with a little peace to ourselves over our heart where we feel the beating, unforced rhythms of our life. Despite our opinion on things, this just keeps going. And the breath, deepen that a little bit more. In and out. Maybe you found you've been clenching your breath all week, and this is the first real deep breath you've taken for a while. So another deep breath in, maybe close your eyes. And out. And last time, the deepest one you've taken all week, in out with a sigh. <sighs> Our first prayer of Ruach, first prayer together, let your chin go high, your eyes open, raise that symbol of peace to your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, hey. glad you're here. Peace be with you. Let us rise and belt out our first hymn together.
opening prayer. Holy God, giver of grace, you understand us. We want big, loud signs. You You speak speak indirectly. A still, small voice. We are are impatient, impatient, easily frustrated, quick quick to anger, wanting to rain fire down on those we consider enemies and those who inconvenience us. We give thanks that you are patient, slow to anger, and understanding. You forgive us and remember our sin no more. Help us become more like you. Gift us with the mind of Christ. May your spirit intercede for us and guide us along life's path. This we pray in your many holy names. Amen. Please be seated.
I'm going to be reading from Galatians 5, verse 1, uh, and verses 13 through 25. You can find it in your New Testament, um, page 179 in the Pew Bible. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only you did not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you do not con be not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornic fornication, impurity, liciousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the, of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. And from Luke chapter 9, verses 51 through 62, uh, found in your New Testament, page 66 in your pew Bible. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. And he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God.
Is, am I not working? Oh, uh, Miss Stacy's going to have this one, okay? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they heard your cute voice. All right, Sam didn't come to school yesterday because he was feeling like he was going to be sick. Thankfully, he wasn't. Uh, you know, there's an excuse. Let's see, let's see what this one says. Please excuse Josh for being absent. I forgot to wake him up, and I did not find him until I started making the beds. By then, it was too late for him to go to school. What? <laughs> what? I know. That one's good, isn't it? Yeah. All right, here's, here's another one. Please excuse Jillian's absence from school. It was take your daughter to work day, and since I don't have a job, I made her stay home and do housework. Oh, it's... That's a great one, isn't it? Okay, and this one, this one's pretty funny. Okay, here, here, sit down right beside me. Right, right. Okay, ready? Please excuse Olivia for missing school yesterday. We forgot to get the Sunday paper off the porch, and when we found it on Monday, we thought it was Sunday. <laughs> you think that really happened? Here, here, sit. What? Nope, nope, sit down right here by me. Sit right here by me. So, as a principal or a teacher getting those, I probably would laugh out loud with that, huh? So we all make excuses for things sometimes, right? And sometimes they're silly, and sometimes they're legitimate. Here, have a seat right beside me, buddy. Have a seat right here, okay? Right here. So today's story, if you were listening, Jesus was asking some people to follow him, and they came up with some, some excuses. The one guy said, oh, I need to go bury my father first. Now, I don't know, maybe his father actually did pass away, but we don't know that for sure, right? Here, have a seat, buddy. Can you just sit? No, no, no. Yeah. And then another guy said, I need to go say goodbye to my family first. And Jesus wanted them to come now. He's like, I don't have time for that. I need you to come follow me now. And that's what Jesus wants us to do, not to make excuses, not to say, you know what, I can't do that right now. I just I have to do this. Jesus wants us to follow him now and do what we can to treat others with kindness and love. Yeah, I know. And love everybody and treat everybody the way that we want to be treated. And he wants us to do that now and not wait. We're going to go downstairs and we're going to talk about fruits of the Spirit, which was also in our scripture today. And today is kindness. We're going to talk about spreading kindness, okay? Because we need lots of that, right? Fruit. <laughs> All right, let's say a prayer and then we're going to go downstairs. Nope, 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 nope. Sit down, buddy. Nope, 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 nope. nope. Sit, just. All right, dear God, help us to follow Jesus now and to not make excuses and to spread his love and his kindness everywhere. In your name we pray, amen. Now let's say the prayer that Jesus taught all of us. Our Father. Let's go downstairs. We gather now our joys and concerns. We lift up John Fleming, Jill Lennox's brother, who has been in the hospital the last 15 days. It is a 100-mile round trip for John's wife, Jill was able to get up there for about four days and is heading back, um, but it's looking pretty dire. We lift up uh, Jen Cockrell's mom and sister, continue with health issues, tests coming later this week. We lift up our own Reverend Harry Buck, hip replacement was on the 20th. He is ambulating decently and is going through rehab, so we hope that that speeds up and eases pain. We lift up Kaysen Chandler, recently diagnosed with lymphoma. This is the Benson's eight-year-old grandson. We lift up. 
great grandson. Yes, great grandson. We also lift up Yvonne, who will be traveling for a sister-in-law's memorial and will be gone from us for a month, so travel mercy and blessings to Yvonne. We lift up the Rios family, a friend of Molly, who lost uh, a wife ex seven months, seven and a half months pregnant, expecting a child. Both lost their lives. We also lift up Bruce Ronald, Ken Zolke's best man from his wedding, who died on the 11th. We also lift up Greg Schaefer's friend who died on Good Friday and gifted him a Bible and is still speaking uh, through that. We lift up our birthdays for Elliot Avalon and Connie Anderson, Dan Hunter, Vivian Vaughn, Lily Rosen and Karen Brucken, Ruby Gabrielson, Mark Harvath, Carol Fawcett, Jeff Rosen, Debbie Peterson, Josh Olin, Cindy Karecki, and Nancy Montgomery. A few of you celebrating, so blessings this week. And to our anniversaries of Bob and Rebecca Marshall, Jack and Diane Stoll, Ken and Sue Dean, who have gifted us with the flowers on the communion table in honor of their 51st. Look at you go. Look at you go. Stu and Diana Root, Earl and Edith Olson, Jay and Lisa Bowen, Christopher and Beth Burdick, Brad and Mindy Alt, all celebrating. The Special Olympics were this week, and Megan and Josh Fry both won single, both won gold in singles and doubles in their events. The rain continues for the Doherty's. We want to thank our uh, Delts and Stacy and Hobby Horse who provided a great Compassion Camp VBS two weeks ago. And Hobby Horse had their trikathon of kids driving around. So those lines that are in the, those are chalk. They'll, they'll wash out in the rain. No worries about that, friends. But that was from the Hobby Horse trikathon. We also want to lift up our... <laughs> After two years of just kind of sitting back, our caring team is just clicking on all cylinders. Literally, thanks to the great race coming here, about 300 folk through here, drivers, navigators, car enthusiasts, all being fed within these walls. We're, we have so many great stories to share and to tell. Uh, it was just a great day, a tiring day, a long day, uh, but a wonderful day for all of Medina for the great race. So... If you have anything to add, please see me after service. We'll get it on. We pray for all, no matter where you are, how you're feeling, what's going on in your life or the nation or the world. We are here for you and we'll lift it up to God. Let us join one another in prayer. Holy One, uh, lest we get the wrong idea, Paul has listed a couple of lists and, and some of us will focus on the what not to do in the oppression and the judgment side. While Paul was actually wanting us to focus on the fruits of the Spirit, because against those things there is no law. Nothing can hold us back from being loving and gentle and kind and all the other things. We are liberated no matter what we face when we act those things out. Help us, guide us, be with us, as we try to produce more of the fruits of the Spirit, wherever we are, wherever we find ourselves, for our hearts are restless until they rest in you. May we find a home for you and in you, and in thus doing, find our home to be everywhere your Spirit takes us. We pray this in your many holy names. Amen. So the foxes have holes. The birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. I was called to be a delegate to the 2013 United Church of Christ National Synod in Long Beach, California, when I first brought my attention to this verse. This is brought to my attention because it was the verse of a resolution I was called to wordsmith in a windowless conference room in Long Beach, California. I could have been on the beach. I was in Southern California. There's a lots of other things I'd rather be doing. 
And I was getting bitter and thinking about writing a resolution banning resolutions to all future synods. I mean, what a waste of time. Well, so I thought in 2013, but God is still speaking and largely through irony in my case, but we'll get to that because today we've had that verse come back round. A haunting statement made by Jesus today in our gospel lesson. It harkens back to Christmas. To his birth. There was no room for them in the inn. Maybe there was vacancy, but due to the haggard look of the poor car- carpenter and his fiancee, or it was their unmarried status, or we don't know why, there was room, but just not for them in the inn, much like the neon vacancy signs shining out to black travelers that weren't in their green book in the Jim Crow days in the South, and they had to keep traveling, for there was vacancy, but not for them in the inn. Or simply, maybe there just was no room, no space. Housing was at full capacity. Foxes have the holes, birds of the air the nest, but the son of the man has no place to lay his head. When God comes to us in the flesh, we do not include. We keep God at arm's length. God comes to us not wearing a crown or wrapped in a flag or any other statement of power. The saying, cleanliness is next to godliness, is not true. You can walk through pristine halls of power and not find God. You can look in the gleaming marble courthouses and not find God. You can head into gorgeous cathedrals or stately houses of worship, and God is conspicuously absent. If you want to find God, get in the dirt. Attend to the seasons. Get out in nature. That is God's first testament to us. I guarantee you'll find God. And among the poor, you will find Jesus. For that's Jesus' people. That's who he was born to, lived among. That's who he was at table with. That's who his disciples were and are. Implicitly, Jesus is saying that if the Son of Man has no place, then neither will those who follow him. This means the followers of Christ must recognize dehumanizing systems when they see them and call them out and not make their abode there. To be as Christ, we must comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. To overturn the tables that profit and separate people from God and from their neighbor, that turn houses of prayers into den of thieves and robbers and rock shows. And we can do this, friends, by starting hyper-local. The resolution I was called to work on back in 2013 was a resolution of witness for the need for affordable housing in the United States of America. And my friends, we are in an affordable housing crisis. It is everywhere and in every state. It is not a red-blue thing, for both parties lack this. California ranks number one, Texas number two, and lack of affordable housing nationwide. From 2010 to 2020, there were fewer homes built in the U.S. than any previous decade. That might not be true for Medina County. I know if we have a field, there's a house going up in it. But for the rest of the nation. Similarly, the types of homes being built here in Medina are not the smaller entry-level starter homes. In the 1980s, starter homes were around 40% of all construction, and recently that number is under 7%. This has a major impact in our communities. A Forbes article states that the lack of adequate affordable housing has a host of negative effects on communities and individuals. Housing Housing cost-burdened families experience greater stress relating to food security, health care, retirement, transportation, and overall social stability. Also, the lack of affordable housing that is proximate to job centers leads to increased traffic and negative environmental impacts. Among other things, it exacerbates urban sprawl and creates a lack of diversity within our communities. And according to the National Low Income Housing Coalition, there are 6.8 million more affordable homes needed to house low-income families. Top it off, we have 
580,000 people who are homeless, and 70% of low-income families pay half their income on rent, half, when that number should be around 20%. Foxes have holes. Birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man, like so many today, have no place to lay his head. We have placed profit over people. We have reduced our neighbors to commodities. We can press for their wealth. In a reductionist view, people are reduced to consumers, and our job is to get them to consume what we produce, and if we get them to consume, we shake out their pockets to every last red cent. And that way, we win the game. But we are not playing a game. We are living life. And playing that game is, doesn't sound like a very neighborly thing or what Jesus was going for at all. It is that view that enslaves people. That's the, not the way of Christ. That's not the way that Paul recommends to us in the Galatians text. For it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. And do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. And there are many ways to indulge the flesh through our greed and in our need for comfort and security over and against the needs of our neighbors. It can be very, very subtle. I mean, we need comfort and security, absolutely. So many of us might be nodding and saying, yes, pastor, we need affordable housing, but how about next door? Oh, oh, no, not next door. I like my community as is. What if they get here? We can't, we can't put them here. Who are they anyway? They are our neighbors. God lives with them and God's image is in them. And who are we assuming when we picture affordable housing? Weren't many of us out here needing to begin living somewhere in that really funny quirky, that's the word, quirky first apartment we all had that you had to hit the stove a certain way for the burner to light up, I don't know. Didn't some of us start there? Let's assume that they are just like us and we need to house them. So what is the Christian response? I have two small local suggestions that we can get started on right away that we, the church, are engaging in. The first is Operation Homes. Operation Homes has been in Medina for almost 30 years. Its goal is to provide housing and, house and education for those who are shelter insecure. Both personally and financially, it is a program for those who want to be in it. These individuals are background checked. They are given a social worker. They attend classes and training. They are given resources to help set them up and achieve their goals. Many folks in this program over the past 30 years have largely been mothers with children fleeing domestic violence situations or foster kids who have aged out of the system, all with no place to lay their head. They are given space to stay in churches around town. And for eight days, a church will host these families. For the past two years, they've been held, housed in motels around town. And even though this totally ruined their budget, God somehow provided for these families and for Operation Homes. But this fall, they hope to get back to the circuit of churches. Now, there could be many as one person or one family and maybe up to as many as 10 people at a given time. The churches are called to provide a dinner, a safe place to sleep while folks get training and help find a stable place to live. They come in at 5 p.m., they leave before 7 a.m. The mission team is bringing that program here. That's right, you can clap, that's right. <laughs> And we have made meals over the summer, and this fall, council has devoted to say, yes, we are giving this program a one-year trial basis, and it is an all-hands-on-deck alert to us all. We're going to need folks to prevail meals, to act as hosts, to sleep here, because what's better? Do you remember the youth group overnights 
in a just really horrible sleep on an uncomfortable couch, you can sign up for that now too. I may need to work on the script. I don't know if that's going to get anyone. But hey, however you are called, contact Nick North. This is supported by the mission team, by council, by Hobby Horse, who has signed off on this. We will not be in the Hobby Horse side. We'll be on the church side. Hobby Horse is like, yeah, go for it. Our insurance company, I'm just trying to, those who are like, whoa, what about insurance? If you step foot on our property, our insurance covers you. If you sleep overnight here in this church, our insurance covers you. If you fall off a pew and skin your knee and get a rug burn, our church insurance covers you because foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but people need homes. And there are many benefits for folks to be in affordable housing. Among other factors like income and education, housing is a component that drastically influences a personal person's physical and mental well-being. Poverty is detrimental to people's options. And poverty is linked to a vast range of health problems, acute and chronic in nature. A healthier population means a healthier community in every sense of the word. There is a belonging one feels. And when you belong, I think that you're less likely to trash your surroundings. You take pride. You pick up litter. You're kinder to your neighbors. There's a security and rootedness when you have the sense that people care about you and your well-being, and you, in turn, care about theirs. Yet there are those who are dead to the needs of others. Let the dead bury the dead. A man says to Jesus, I want to follow you, Lord, but I have to say goodbye. I have to do this other thing. I have to follow you or I'll follow you when my schedule opens up. Let me see this in Google Calendar. Is Tuesday good? No, I got a thing on Tuesday, Jesus. I'm sorry. Jesus is uncompromising and gives no quarter to that thinking in today's passage. The way of the cross has no place for rash promises or misunderstandings of the cost of what it is to be a disciple of Jesus. It's not, well, once I'm middle class, I'll follow you, or when I can, or after the kids' travel sports season is done. Sorry, folks. No one who looks back is fit for the kingdom. That's harsh, uncompromising, and uncomfortable. I heard a Christian financial guru recently say, look, it's not your fault that you have to throw someone out who couldn't afford rent. That's the market doing that, not you. No. No, that's not Jesus. That's not a Christian response. That is profit over people. If they get here, crime will increase because poor people are inherently criminal. Nice people who say not in my backyard don't have the sense to say that, but that's what they mean. And I think of Galatians, if you bite and devour each other, watch out for you will be destroyed by each other. If not in our backyard, then where? I'm fully convinced that inclusion has never once created a criminal, a mass shooter, or a terrorist. Exclusion does that. When you feel isolated, alone, unheard, unloved, uncared for, that's when bad things happen. But focusing on the ties that bind, that's good for communities and for the thriving of individuals. And I believe Operation Homes does that. It gives folks a place to land and some stability while they work to improve themselves and learn the skills they weren't taught or somehow lack and this work requires all of us. No one is going to do this for us. We, the church, must lead the way of ensuring that our community is filled with the fruits of the Spirit and it starts within these walls and it echoes and reverberates out from here. So I hope you will prayerfully consider adding your gifts to the gifts of Operation Homes. And if that's not yours, I have another option. It's a little more us upstream, so once we get them through Operation Homes, there's still a lack of affordable housing. Santee Landing was built in Wadsworth. 50 units, two to three bedroom apartments, and it has a waiting list of 300 folks upon opening. 
Because of this, a group of churches have been gathered thanks to the urgings of Reverend Dr. Henry Pierce from the Medina Presbyterian. He called me up and said, are you willing to work with affordable housing with me? And I got the chills. I'm like, thank you, thank you. Okay, 2013, I'm here again in that windowless conference room that I was being all bitter about. God had a plan back then. And God is still speaking largely through humiliation and irony for me. That was the topic that the resolution I had to work on. And we have gathered with Heartland and Cornerstone and St. Paul's and St. Francis Xavier and Brunswick Reformed and First Baptist and more to form, and get this, the Medina Interfaith Coalition for Affordable Housing. Isn't that fun? That's a good name. It's short. We, we're going to shorten it to MICA because it just feels biblical, doesn't it? And the purpose of MICA is to build affordable housing units in our backyards. As Henry called up, he says, are you ready to be, this is going to be the most miserable experience you've ever done. And I said, oh boy, sign me up, because people are going to come out of the woodwork and say, no, not here, until it's built and they discover, oh, I know that neighbor. They attend my children's school. I work with them. They just started here. They just gave me my happy meal. And they're now my neighbor. Until that happens, there will be opposition. So I'm putting you on notice, church. <laughs> In our backyards. And if you're initially against it, let's talk, let's grab coffee, because it's coming. <laughs> and if you want to help me, I could use a buddy around 1.30 on a Thursday. I could use a planning partner from the congregation. It's strategic work. It's long-term work. There's some wordsmithing. I've been to every meeting, and I need your help. Someone to represent our congregation in the future. And if this sounds like your work, I'd love to talk to you. And if Operation Home sounds like your work, there's a sign-up right over there on the mission board. Operation Homes and MICA are working for similar things to benefit our community to help build the kingdom of God right here as on earth as it is in heaven. For when Jesus says, I was a stranger and you welcomed me, we'll be like, oh yeah, that was you? Happy to serve you, Lord. Or when Jesus starts to say, the Son of Man has no place, we're like, whoa, 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 hold, slow your roll there, Jesus. Lord, you have a place. You have this place. Thanks be to God. Amen. Loving God, you who have no place to lay your head, the foxes have their dens, 
the birds of the air have their nests. May we offer, may what we offer make a home for you and for our neighbor. We will rise in body or spirit and sing praise to you, our God. are restless until they rest in you. We dedicate these gifts to that four-letter word that so many are looking for, the word that you provide and where we are truly loved, not in spite of who we are, but because of who we are, home. We dedicate these gifts so that our neighbors may find home in you and in our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I'm normally right over here wishing you a great week ahead, but I won't be there again for the second week in the row as I'm going to be setting up my doctoral thesis presentation. I hope you can make it, and I hear that if I offer punch and cookies, I'll at least get five people. There's punch and cookies thanks to the Dobner family reunion. We really appreciate it, Dan, and your family. So punch and cookies and maybe a thesis, because what's better on a nice summer day than being inside? <laughs> Am I selling it? I'm selling it. Okay, good. Men's group. This afternoon, Chuck will see you in the new library, men. I highly recommend it to you. And finally, in Fellowship Hall on Tuesday at 7 p.m., Trees. No, a book about trees, and the author from Brunswick, Annette Palmer, will be here talking about her book, Trees, God's Hint for Humanity. We hope you'll be there. And if you can't make it, it's summer. We get it. Go forth. Someone will be here for you. And once again, Operation Homes, 
talk to me. We'll see you in fellowship in a little bit. And if not, please join me in the benediction. May you go out and stand on your mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. Do not let the wind distract you. We shall hold our focus. Do not be shaken by the earthquake. We shall not fear the fire. But after all this, may we hear the voice of our still speaking God in the sheer silence, a voice that blesses you in your zeal. Having been blessed to be a blessing, go, for this service is ended and our service now begins. Amen.